Sherry Russell for mining.com.au and joining me today is Philippa Leggett, the Managing Director for Critica. Philippa, it is fabulous to see you again. How are you? I'm great. Thanks, Shay. Lovely to be here. What incredible news we have to discuss today. So let's get into it. Now, Jupiter looks to be a landmark discovery for Australian clay-hosted rare earth deposit. Is that a fair take? Bang on. Yes. Amazing. I've been waiting so long to be able to talk about this. We have finally got numbers. We put our resource out, right? And it's enormous. I've said enormous all along. Enormous is 1.8 billion tonnes at 1,700 parts per million of total rare earth oxide. And while that's wonderful, the bit we're going to be focusing on is the high grade component, which is 520 million tonnes at 2,200 parts per million. How's that for an inferred resource coming straight out of the blocks, first one we've put out, and yes, it is the biggest in Australia by a country mile and comparable with all the ones in Brazil. So absolutely brilliant. This is just incredible and a testament to the methodology that you have applied to get it to this point. So what is the significance of the high grade component of the resource? Is that a likely focus for any potential future development? Yes, you're absolutely right and a good question to ask. I mean, with such an enormous resource, where do you start? High grade means high value. Naturally, that's the place you're going to look at first. So how, do we, how are we guided by the information we've got in terms of the next steps to take? So look at the, the future commercial potential, the development potential. That 500 million tonnes, arguably for, for using round numbers, if you take that and say, well, what would you be processing? A big rare earths plant is 5 million tonnes per annum. That's a 100-year mine life looking at, at just that high-grade resource. That means we have optionality. Where do you start? So we're going to be spending a bit of time looking at the best areas to start so that we can focus our resource upgrade on those areas for the best bang for buck, for the best product development at the end of the day. The highest NDPR grades, for example, we had a record that we put out last year for 5,000 ppm of just NDPR uh, on its own. Now, that alone is an area to be focusing on. So we'll be looking at aspects like that. And then if you, if, if you keep in mind where this project is located, because you can't take that out of the piece. These are complex metallurgical processing situations, obviously. But they're also just infrastructure plays. And we have the enviable situation of being 10 k's off a tar road, a bitumen highway that runs between the port, existing port, at the town of Geraldton and Mount Magnet. And alongside that runs a gas pipeline. There are transmission power lines within 40 k's of site. And we've got flat terrain that's easy to access all year round. We've got minimally stocked crown pastoral leases and only two station owners over the top of our single deposit. So what we're looking at is a phenomenal package of high grade, high value mineralization in an area that is just ripe for commercial potential and development. So yes, we've, we've got a lot to work with and the high grade is definitely our focus. Philippa, what are the implications for the beneficiation of this resource and are they expected to be uniformly applied? Very good question in relation to rare earths and the fact that we've just released this enormous, enormous deposit, right? So why did we pick beneficiation? Number one, we've got a really smart team that took the time to understand our mineralogy, understand your rocks, make your test work, designed specifically, tailor-made to match them so you deliver meaningful results. And we did. We saw a near 10 times upgrade in the grade and at the same time a 95% reduction in the overall mass through simple flotation processing, right, at ambient temperatures. So we wanted to make sure that we could do something that could be consistently applied. We conducted the test work on samples uh, that were composites from seven different holes, right? So much more meaningful than one director special. It's this applies to broad swathes of this mineralization because we want people to trust the data. The reason we focused on beneficiation is the economic potential of the, that beneficiation brings. Now, if you look at those results, near 10 times upgrade, that means your value, the value of your product has gone up 10 times, right? much higher margins to work with because of that. And at the same time, you've taken 100% of your mass, so say 100 million tonnes, and you've turned it into 5 million tonnes. That means 
whatever processing you need to do at that next stage, you've got much smaller volumes of material to work with. That means lower reagents, therefore lower reagent costs. That means a smaller plant. That's the economic benefit of taking these steps. Now, why did we think we could do this? And that's because we have a clay hosted project. And that means that it has weathered to the extent that it's broken down. It's also quite old though, so it's stable mineralization. And that allowed us to identify the potential for it to be amenable to beneficiation. Different to ionics, they're slightly younger rocks, so they're more unstable. And from what we can understand, we haven't seen the potential for theirs to be beneficiated. They have other benefits. They can be leached with Amsol, but they have to use the whole rock. They have to leach absolutely everything. And we are starting, the advantage we have is by reducing that volume enormously. So whatever we do at the next stage comes with lower capital and operating costs. So that's what we're targeting. We've had a great amount of success with it, and it's a very good base level, especially when you consider this as CITER test work. First pass just started, and we really think we can improve on that before we work towards the, the MREC, which obviously we're going to be doing because that's what people need to see. Uh, all right, this is an incredible achievement, and I guess it's a little unfair of me to ask this question now, but what comes next? You've announced the maiden resource, so what does the next three to six months look like for Critica? Yeah, well, look, firstly, there's a lot of information for people to absorb, right? I mean, huge resource, huge amount of data. People need to get their heads around it. I know that's going to take a bit of time. Um, first is obviously going to be the resource upgrade. Where do we focus on those areas to take the, the certainty uh, around the next stages. Uh, so we'll be moving mineralization into measured and indicated categories. That'll be our target, and we will be focusing on the high-grade area. So a number of aspects to that. Then there's exploration. Remember, we don't just have Jupiter. We've made those five additional discoveries. And at Jupiter, we've got a 23% magnet rare earths. Those are NDPR and DYTB, the, the, the ones that go into permanent magnets that everybody's on about because they are the most valuable of, of the rare earths. So 23% ratio, which is standard with all the global ionics as well as all the clay hosted. And then on top of that, we made some discoveries that said, hmm, perhaps there's 34% down there as a ratio for ma magnetic rare earths. Maybe you want to go and look down there. That's worth following up, in our opinion, because it has that economic potential. So looking at the satellites for exploration upside, uh, and they are, it's unfair to call them satellites, you know, they are physical targets that appear to be bigger than that appear to be bigger than Jupiter. So satellites may be a misnomer. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then the last and obviously most important component is the metallurgy. We're well funded. We have five labs working on this work. The base level work we've done as cited test work is delivering results that we believe forms an incredible base to move forwards from. And those are the steps we're going to take. So we have got a globally significant resource which people can now get their heads around, which has the strategic potential to be meaningful to Australia's supply chain in future. This is, it's a really big deal. It's located beautifully with infrastructure all around it. Um, we have this phenomenal team who are building incredible intellectual property that allowed us to learn and, and make those, those new discoveries. Then we've got, uh, what are we doing with that team, that same team for the IP? And... Uh, uh, if you believe in the strategic potential of rare earths going forwards, which so many people do, there are major investors securing large deposits or access to them all over the world because the pricing is expected to turn at some point. Why would you invest in anything else in Australia than, other than something that is huge, high grade and incredibly well located? Jupiter's got to be your play. Uh, you took the words right out of my mouth. Uh, congratulations once again on this news. Uh, a long time coming and it is just outstanding information delivered to the market. Listen, Philippa, thank you so much for taking the time to break it down for me. I really appreciate it. Can't wait to see what you do next. Thanks for having me, Shay. Bye.